crash rate uh, is, that is significantly higher than uh, the average interceptions within the District 3 year, District 3 year. CARD also has a lack of bicycle accommodations that we're going to try to address this project. A lot of non-compliant ADA pedestrian accommodations. There's poor driveway curb cut control. Um, a lot of driveways uh, are wide open, so it creates kind of a free-for-all atmosphere going in and out of uh, adjacent uh, lots. And there's also substandard uh, design and drainage system within the project that we're, we're going to um, we want to address. Next slide. So the, here's some pictures of the uh, Fall Brook Bridge. Uh, this bridge was constructed in 1915. Uh, it was widened in 1934. The last inspection was done March 1st, 2021. And weight restrictions are currently in place for this bridge. Uh, the structure is going to be replaced to support current design loads. Um, the deck superstructure and substructure, when they were um, when they were inspected in March 2021, all categorized as fair condition. So this bridge is going to be replaced. Next, the Litchfield intersection has antiquated signal equipment. Um, you can see that the pavement markings are faded. ADA ramps and walks are substandard and in disrepair. That, that's going to be addressed. Next. So th these are a couple more examples of uh, the pavement condition. Um, you can see the uh, significant cracking, um, utility trenching, phase of pavement markings, and, and lack of signage. These slides then illustrate the four sidewalk conditions. You can see the lack of bicycle accommodation, uh, poor access management. Asphalt curves from the corridor have been uh, torn up by snow plows. Uh, the shoulder width is about three feet in this picture, which isn't enough to accommodate uh, cyclists. Um, cracking and settling in the pavement, and you can see it around the existing drainage manhole, the manhole where the catch basin is actually settled. And the wide open parking lots that I mentioned create a free for all atmosphere for cars entering and exiting the businesses. The drainage outfalls along the car aren't functioning as they were designed, uh, mostly due to the, they're being plugged. So um, the entire drainage, either plugged up or collapsed, some of these pipes may have collapsed. So the entire drainage system. Pipes that are still there and the intent function will be cleaned out so they are functioning and we are also proposing new catch basins and new pipes uh, where uh, necessary. Thanks. So what, what do we want to accomplish? Next, project goals. So these, these goals are what I've just talked about. Um, you know, pavement, uh, bike accommodation, we want to make it more uh, friendly for multimodal for pedestrians. Uh, new curbs, new sidewalks, um, new striping and signage. We acknowledge that the speeds out there are, are, are high, so uh, some of the techniques we're using with the, the curbs and the narrow uh, travel lanes a bit, the traffic calming, so we're trying to open up, lower the speeds, uh, and, and we'll get Tom get into that a little more on some of the other. Uh, ways that we're trying to do that. And, uh, so at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Tom to talk a little more about uh, more detail about the proposed uh, project. Thank you, Dave. Can everyone hear me okay? No. no. How about now? Yeah. Um, Not really. We have to be really, really We didn't hear much of anything that has been said so far. Um, I'm Tom Bigelow from Grand National, uh, as Dave said. So, one of the main uh, uh, purposes of the project is to improve the pavement uh, throughout the project lines. So, one of the main things that will be done is starting at the Sterling Town Line all the way up to Tachi Street will be a middle structural overlay. 
which will help provide additional strength to the roadway and also provide smooth riding surface after the uh, pavement has been reconstructed and the drainage has been uh, reconstructed as well. Uh, another main component of the project is providing ADA compliant sidewalks. Uh, so there'll be new sidewalks constructed throughout the project. Um, there'll be new sidewalks on both sides of the roadway, starting at Lake Hill Road, which if you remember the project area is just south of Willow Street. So both, both sides of the roadway will have five sidewalks uh, from Lake Hill all the way up to Taji Street. And then starting at the Sterling Town Line, there'll be a new sidewalk on the west side of the roadway. Uh, which is the, uh, the southbound side of the roadway. Uh, new on-road bicycle accommodations are also part of the project uh, in the form of bicycle lanes, and also uh, improved intersection geometry, uh, including a roundabout at Litchfield Street, uh, which is a modern roundabout design designed to accommodate uh, large tractor trailers up to a WP67, which is uh, typically the larger uh, types of trucks that you'll see on, on those types of roadways. Um, and one of the main goals is to put the roundabout is to reduce speeds of the vehicles in and out of the roundabouts, um, and also they help reduce uh, crash severity. Uh, but they also come with comparable uh, level of service um, and number of cars that can accommodate the uh, be accommodated at the intersection if they're trapped. There are also signal improvements uh, proposed at Willard Street, which will also be added to. Uh, driveway and access management uh, will help eliminate conflict points. Uh, as Dave said, there's very large driveways out there, some 60, 70 feet wide. So we'll be reducing the driveway widths down so cars can still get in, in and out of them, appropriate to you know, the use of that property. Uh, but we're reducing them down so that way they're not quite so wide, and it really helps uh, reduce that conflict zone between pedestrians and drivers. Uh, it also helps control speeds and defines the pedestrian path. Themselves. Uh, new uh, signage and striping will be installed throughout the project limits, as well as upgrades to the drainage systems and culverts, which will help improve drainage capacity, uh, improve deteriorating pipe sections. Uh, there's some, we saw in some of the pictures some of the types of cloth segment, so that will get cleaned out, which will also help with the drainage and performance of the drainage system. Uh, we'll also be installing uh, catch basins along the roadway additional catch bases to help uh, improve the surface drainage, both during rainstorms, but also that helps with the snow, snow and ice and conditions as well. Uh, as a part of the improvements, utility relocations are proposed, uh, mainly overhead utility relocations uh, to help accommodate the ADA compliant sidewalk, so those utility poles will be out of the sidewalk um, and out of the shade as past when we have those proposed, um, and as well to accommodate the uh, geometric at the Litchfield uh, Road intersection, sorry, Litchfield Street intersection, as well as Road Street. So, this next slide here is a proposed cross section, and this is the cross section of the southern portion of the job, basically starting at the Sterling Town Line and up to uh, Lake Hill Road. So, starting on the left side of the page, there's the bike sidewalk with the bike bicycle lane. Uh, 11 foot traveling in the southbound direction, followed by 11 foot traveling in the northbound direction, and finally, all the way over on the right, there's a five foot bicycle lane as well um, on the roadway. Now, north of Lake Hill Road, as you approach Willow Street and all the way to Tachi Street, uh, there is basically it's a very similar cross section of the roadway. Uh, the only difference here is that there's a sidewalk on both sides of the road where there was only a sidewalk on the left side of the roadway um, on the uh, southern portion of the project. Now, as far as the uh, intersections and the signals that were uh, updating and reconstructing, uh, first is the Willard Street intersection with Route 12. Uh, what updated the gave markings, the existing turn lanes that are there today, there's one, a, a left turn lane going from 12 southbound onto Willow Street, and there's also a right turn lane westbound uh, to head north on uh, Central Street. Those will be maintained in place as a part of the project. Uh, new handicap ramps will be proposed, so that concrete ADA compliant handicap ramps. Um, those will be um, 
they'll basically replace any of the existing handicap ramps, and as well because we're adding a sidewalk up the west side of, uh, of Central Street from the Sterling Town Line. There'll be new crosswalks and new handicap ramps on that westbound, on the west leg of Willow Street across the Willow Street. Uh, well, there where there's a landscape island today, that will be turned into a pedestrian refuge. Um, and all of the pedestrian crossings will have updated ADA signals and also push buttons uh, to accompany the new handicap ramps that are going to be posted. Um, also, there, when a pedestrian face the push button in order to cross the street through that pedestrian face, that will be what we call an exclusive pedestrian face, meaning there won't be any left or right turning vehicles uh, going while the pedestrian has the, the right of way to the crosswalk. So that will be a, a phase where only the pedestrian is allowed to cross the street. Um, there are also vehicle detection loop detectors with bike detection at the intersection. And those will help us optimize the signal timing to help reduce delays and improve level of service at the intersection. Um, at the fire station driveway, we'll be updating the gate markings, uh, we'll do stop points, and really the most important improvement at that intersection will be all brand new mass a new traffic controller, uh, new traffic signals, and there'll also be a uh, new preemption system that will be there for the fire department. So when they need to leave the fire department in an emergency, those lights will still turn as they do, but that whole system will be replaced and upgraded to the department, uh, to the department standards for that system. Now, the biggest geometric improvements are at Litchfield Street, uh, where we're proposing a single lane route. Uh, the next slide has a, uh, has a graphic that shows what that looks like. Um, but that roundabout is designed to meet all current uh, Mass UT and national standards for roundabouts. It's a single circulating roadway with single lane approaches to all of the approaches. That includes both uh, Central Street and Boston and Street approaches. Um, as I said before, it's designed to accommodate traffic trails to the WD67, um, and bicyclists and pedestrians are also accommodated at the so this slide behind me is a graphic that shows that um, <coughs> uh, Central Street Route 12 runs from left to right on the page, and which Field Street runs from the top to the bottom. Um, there are, as you approach the intersection on Central Street, uh, there is a bicycle lane for bicycles. Uh, any bicyclist that's on the road wanting to navigate the roundabout would use bicycle ramps to get up on what is called a shared use path. So essentially that sidewalk winds from five feet beyond the roundabout to 10 feet at the roundabout. And they would then use that shared use path to then cross the, uh, to cross Litchfield Street to continue heading north on Route 12. Uh, same thing in the southbound direction. So the bicyclists are taken out of the roadway in order to uh, get onto the shared use path in order to navigate the roundabout. Um, pedestrians are also coming on that same shared use path and at the crossings on Central Street, uh, rapid rectangular flashing units, which are those uh, yellow, uh, flashing yellow pedestrian signs that are activated by push button, those will be installed in order to increase safety for the pedestrians as they're crossing Central Street. There are also pedestrian refuge islands in between each leg of the intersection. So say as you're crossing from, uh, trying to cross Central Street from the uh, east side of the roadway to the west side of the roadway, a uh, pedestrian only needs to cross one lane of travel at a time uh, with a pedestrian refuge in between for them to stop and wait for traffic on the other side of the uh, roadway to stop as well. The roundabout is what we're calling what we call an elliptical shape, so most roundabouts are usually circular. This roundabout is elliptical, um, and that was done to help reduce impacts to the abutters. Um, on the top left quadrant of this intersection is the bank, um, and then on the uh, right hand side of the page, you have the two gas stations, both the Sunoco and the a mobile gas station now. Um, so that electrical shape has helped reduce the impacts to those properties and those businesses. Utility relocations are required as a part of this, because uh, there are some utility poles really within the existing signal lines intersection, um, and those utility poles will be uh, moved as part of the units. Uh, another large component of the project is the replacement of the bridge over the ball Um 
there is a, uh, as David said, the existing bridge is deteriorating and it's near the end of its useful life. So we're replacing it with a single span uh, bridge with concrete deck beams, and the abutments will also be replaced. The bridge has the same typical section as the rest of the project in this area, which is a sidewalk on both sides, uh, bicycle lanes on both sides, five foot wide, with one foot track lanes, one in each direction. Um, and stage construction will also be required to construct the bridge. And uh, on a couple of slides later on, we'll talk about how traffic is maintained both at the bridge but also uh, in very another locations the project as well. So with that, I'm actually going to turn it over to Mara and just discuss some of the right of effects and how that is handled as part of the project, and then I will wrap up with the proposed improvements. Thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? All right. Again, my name is Mario Russo, and I represent the right of way Bureau of Massachusetts Department of Transportation and Highway Division. The Right-of-Way Bureau is responsible for acquiring all necessary rights in private and public lands for the design and construction and implementation of this project. Procedures must comply with the state and federal regulations governing the acquisition process. Affected property owners will be contacted and protected under the Massachusetts General Laws, primarily 79. If a property, if a project is receiving federal funds, the property owner's rights are further defined under Title III of the Real Property Act of 1970 as amended. Affected property owners will be contacted by personnel from this bureau and consultants representing MassDOT. The current 25% design indicates that acquisitions and fee, permanent takings, and easements will be required. I will be happy to take any <coughs> questions that you might have after the, uh, the meeting. So if you have any specific questions, I'll hang around as long as you need me. Thank you. This slide is to discuss the environmental uh, permits that will be required for the project. Um, water quality data forms and early environmental coordination uh, were conducted uh, as, long, as a part of the 25% design of SDOT. Um, and this project really has typical environmental permits that we would see for this type of project. Uh, there are two big ones, which is, the first one is the Army Corps of Engineers permit, um, which is due to environmental resource impacts, mainly wetlands uh, associated with the bridge, uh, the bridge reconstruction and fall work, and also some minor wetland impacts uh, as we upgrade the drainage system at some of the outfalls where it goes pipes and some wetlands. Um, so there's the Army Corps permit, and then also for similar impacts, we also will have a notice of intent permit to the Lemester Conservation Commission, um, and again, that's for wetland impacts, and uh, also buffer zone impacts and riverfront impacts. Um, that are you know, incidental to the work that we've uh, that we're proposing here as a final project. Now, for construction phasing, um, any construction project obviously does have an impact on the travel of the work. Um, but obviously, with any construction project, we try to minimize those impacts um, as much as possible. So, lane closures will, will occur uh, during the construction of the projects. Uh, but the first thing with any construction project is uh, the two way traffic will be maintained wherever possible. So, just trying to shift the traffic over while completing the work in the roadway and, and uh, maintain two lanes of travel, one in each direction. When that is not possible, one lane alternating uh, setups will be used uh, with a police detail. Uh, Posted uh, most more than likely two police details given the volumes in the roadway um, in order to allow work to occur within the roadway um, but also allow the traffic to pass. And typically, those will be done during you know, the after the morning peak and before the afternoon peak starts. Um, 
There is some potential for short-term detours for a normal work hours. Um, and then, of course, because of the roundabout, we have an existing signal system uh, being in place with the roundabout. We will have site-specific uh, traffic control plans for the contractors to follow there. Um, but because we have a major intersection, two lanes of travel will be maintained at all times through the intersection, uh, as well as the traffic signal will be maintained until the circulatory roadway of the roundabout can be built and uh, enacted by the contractor during construction. And finally, construction phasing after the fall work. Um, because of the construction of the bridge and, and the limited width on the bridge, um, we are proposing one lane alternating traffic with a temporary traffic signal. Um, there, so there will be some delays with that because only one lane of travel will be able to get by at one time. Um, but the, uh, the duration of that is expected to be about 18 months in order to do both phases of the bridge. Now, finally, construction funding. The, uh, the project is uh, fully funded um, using federal and state funds. Um, the estimated total cost is $18.5 million. Um, that includes the construction. It also includes the, uh, the utility relocations and also some police details. But what it does not include is uh, right of way acquisitions. Uh, the project is currently programmed on the uh, year 2024 uh, tip year. Um, and also, right away acquisitions will end up being acquired by the state um, through that right away process as described in the market. Um, so, with that, Dave, I will turn it over to you. Okay, thanks, Paul. So, uh, tonight the plans are at a 25% design level. Uh, we still have several more steps to go uh, before we're, we're ready to advertise. Um, we'll have a 75% design submittal that will come into MassDOT for uh, engineers' reviews. Uh, we'll, we'll also uh, go to the city. Uh, we'll have a 100% design review and then a final plan spec and estimate. So there's several more review processes that are going to happen. Um, as Tom mentioned, uh, the project is, is currently uh, funded and programmed federal fiscal year FY24, which means we have to advertise the project for construction um, between October 1st of this year and September, I'm not sorry, not this year, but of 2023 and September 30th, 2024. Right now, the schedule looks like we're going to be advertising closer to the end of the federal fiscal year, sometime in August 2024, uh, or maybe early September. Um, if that's the case, um, you would probably not see construction until spring of 25. You might see something in FY the end of 24, you know, minor drainage uh, improvements, but more than likely it will get started um, in, in the beginning of 25 in the spring. So how will we keep you informed? Um, this uh, slide has um, different ways to, to submit emails and questions to the department. Uh, if you have, have anything, uh, either tonight or after tonight, um, the first uh, email address is uh, Carrie Lavalli, who's the chief engineer. Um, you can submit an email to her through that DOT feedback. Uh, highway at state.ma.us. There's also uh, a public hearing website um, that will be, information will be posted up on that. Um, so, so there's various ways that you can uh, write in and ask questions. Um, the plans that come in for review will also be coming into um, Lemonster's engineering department. So they'll, they'll have uh, Full plans available uh, at the same time we get. So, so with that, I'd like to open it up to questions. Um, let me let me explain the uh, procedure to do that. Um, you know, the purpose of this hearing is to solicit your input for the project. That's why we're here tonight. 
So that as you know, the plans are not fully complete, and we might not be able to answer all the questions that you have, but we'll do our best to respond um, to them. Uh, anybody that wishes to have his or her comments entered into the official hearing transcript, um, please stand up. Uh, tonight we're going to have people come up to the podium. Um, identify yourself uh, by name and affiliation, whether you're an abutter, concerned citizen, a local official, and if you can just spell your last name, that helps our transcripts, transcriptionists um, making the verbatim transcript. We have uh, local access TV tonight, and we're also filming for our um, MassDoc website. Um, this will be available uh, on our website. Uh, so we have an issue with microphones, so that's why we need people to come up to the, the podium. Um, I just want to remind you, too, that the last sheet of the handout uh, is a mailing sheet. If you have any questions you think about after you go home and you want to um, send them in, e email them or send them in via that uh, handout, you can do that. If you do it within 10 days of tonight, it will become part of the official record. So before I open it up uh, to everybody, it's normal procedure to ask if any uh, elected officials would like to offer their comments first. <coughs> so if there are any elected officials here, I invite you to come up to the podium. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is David Cormier, C-O-R-M-I-E-R. And uh, I represent Group 3, which is the, this is the heart of my, my district. Um, so I just have a couple of um, um, questions, I guess, regarding speed limit. Um, from Posse Street up until, um, I think, Kingdom Hall, it's 40 miles an hour. I think that's considered thickly settled. And I'm wondering if we can have that reduced after this project is complete down to 30. Um, I was reading the standards on the, on the website, and I think the standards in a thickly settled district are 30. I think beyond Leggett Hill, you know, keeping it 40 with the current uh, situation, uh, though it's not as developed there, might still be okay, but from Tossey Street till about um, uh, at least Leggett Hill, it probably should be 30. So that would be one of my things that I wish you could uh, look into possibly address. Um, crosswalks. I know you mentioned them with the lights. Are there going to be any crosswalks mid-span or can you use the traffic light at the fire station um, for pedestrians to cross there? If you can put a crosswalk and allow the pedestrians to activate that light as well, I think that would be a big help because um, some people like to you know, go across the way to El Camino from 556 Central Street if they want to walk. They need a place where they can activate a light so that they can do that safely and not have to go all the way down to Litchfield Street. I mean, that's where they have to go now. Um, and also, uh, one of the residents there um, at Chapman Place asked me if it's possible to incorporate uh, the light at the, at the fire station into their complex. I don't know if you want to check with or work with the association here to see if that is something that the complex as a whole would um, be receptive to, but it is something that somebody did ask me. Um, the rotary. Um, I know there's other rotaries in the area. Um, there's one in Lancaster, there's a couple down in Sterling, there's one in Princeton. Um, one of the differences between those rotaries and this one is there seems to be a lot of curb cuts very close to this rotary, unlike a lot of the others in the area. So I'm just wondering if you can address um, you know, how that's possibly affect this rotary, because it just seems to me like having a rotary there, there's going to be a lot of activity going on with all those curb cuts and people going around the rotary. Um, so that would be another thing that I'd like to hear more about uh, with all the curb cuts there. Um, and I think for now, uh, those are my only concerns. So 
Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the rest of the public and my constituents have to say, and then maybe I'll have a few follow-up questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Um, just a quick response to a couple of things. The, the speed limit reduction uh, is a process for that. Uh, it involves doing a um, speed study with the guns of the, the speeds that are out there and reducing it by a percentage of the actual running speed. And what you said about uh, afterwards um, doing that study makes a lot of sense because we're hoping that once we do this project, we're going to slow the speeds down. So that might be a good time to, um, you know, to, to take a look at something like that and see if we can change the posted speed. Um, <coughs> crossing at the fire station, we're not. I don't think we're putting any new mid-block crossings in, but ones that are there now, correct me if I'm wrong, Tom. We're going to put them back and make them compliant with today's standards. We had one um, one crossing mid-block. Um, we talked to somebody earlier tonight. About putting in a rapid flash and beacon so it would be push button activated and stop the traffic. That's something we, we, we're going to look at. Um, and we can take a look at the crossing at the fire station too. Um, the, the roundabout curb cuts are a challenge. And you know, we've, been, we've been working, we have to make sure we can get access to the gas stations and the businesses with the tanker trucks and so forth. So we've been working, looking at that closely. We've actually met with the different, with the gas stations out there. Um, we're trying to channelize everything so it's, it's everybody knows a little clear where to go in and out of the businesses. Um, so it is a challenge, but it, you know we, we have done these roundabouts in that kind of atmosphere before, and um, we're, we're working on trying to make it safer. Is there any other elected officials that would like to speak? Yes, sir, in the back. Good evening. Uh, my name is Claire Frida. I'm a uh, law business counselor at large. And I was the uh, Ward 3 counselor for 16 years prior to that, 10 years ago. Um, and I'm pretty familiar with the area. I've lived off of Central Street for 52 years. Uh, and I've watched it grow and grow and grow. Um, I'm a little concerned because I spent the last month calling, when this meeting was first announced, calling every business that I could get a hold of. Um, and not one of them was aware of the meeting tonight. Uh, fortunately, the original meeting that was to us on Zoom was put off till tonight. So I know there are many people here tonight because of uh, uh, I haven't been, been contacted, so I'm glad to see that some of them will be speaking after, I'm sure. Um, you know, there have been businesses on that road for many, many years, and I don't think anybody knows the area better than they do with their businesses in and out. Um, and I think they, they will be instrumental to uh, uh, asking the questions and maybe giving some insight as to what you should be looking at. Uh, one thing I'm concerned about is the lighting on that street. Um, it almost has a tunnel effect from Tyson Street to uh, El Camino. Uh, I drive that road all the time. And last night was a perfect example. It was raining, it was windy, it was dark, and there were two women walking on the right side of the road, um, completely dressed in black. If it wasn't so dark and windy, I probably would be going a little faster than I was going. And we've already had a fatality in that area. We've also had a near fatality in that area. And I'm not sure if there have been any more, but I know those two are very serious. Uh, and that's that exa exact same area. So if you're going to be encouraging bicycle paths and pedestrian traffic, there really needs to be increased lighting in that whole area. I mean, that's going to be an integral part of this plan. Um, it's, it's very important. It's, it's important now, but if you're going to encourage, which everybody's encouraging, I mean, it's, it's good to be encouraging the bicycle paths and the pedestrian traffic, but there's got to be all the pieces to work in there at the same time. Um, there are many businesses, I think, that 
Ken Bob, I know Wayne will speak to it, but there's an assisted living facility um, that I uh, have very many independent minded um, uh, residents there that like to cross the street to go to the coffee shop, uh, go pick up something at the store. Um, and it's very difficult. Uh, they have a great plan uh, with a bus that will drive people there. But I think there has to be, um, or there could be, a conversation with that um, assisted living facility to maybe have some kind of help crossing that roadway, whatever you could, you could suggest. I mean, there are people that are wheelchairs, there are people walking, whether it be crosswalks, uh, however, however that could be looked at. And there are, there are many other businesses, and hopefully they will speak tonight. Um, but I, I'm concerned that the, and I know you can't contact everybody, but I'm concerned that, that not one business that I contacted in the past month knew about this meeting. So uh, I'm hoping there aren't people that don't know really about the meeting tonight and will know, you know, in the near future, um, and will be made available for them to be able to make comment. If you could contact and keep the city council abreast um, of information so that we can get information out to people that you might not get, um, I think that would be extremely helpful. Um, I think um, there are going to be a lot of conversation as you go along. I mean, we, I know we all know that that road needs help. I mean, it, it's it's like I said when I moved there 52 years ago, there was one restaurant and one gas station from the center of town, you know, to where I live. Um, and that's almost a <laughs> sterling line. So, you know, it has developed a lot, and it does need some, it's a lot of new housing. There are a lot of, a lot of improvements that need to take place. Um, but there are, there's also, um, you know, some real consideration that's gonna take place in, in the planning process. So, um, hopefully, there will be a lot of conversation. There will be a lot of discussion. There will be a lot of contact with the, with the businesses. As I said, they know better than anyone you know, what's going to be a plus or a minus to that area. And I think it, it done right. I, I was representing the area where the Hess gas station was being built. That was a horror. We had traffic studies that said that intersection at Litchfield and Central was one of the worst traffic accident spots in the state. Um, fortunately, thanks to the planning board and the planning director at the time, um, we were able to relook at the, the project at a year then, within a year, to come back and look at it. We had people taking less than they shouldn't have taken less. We were able to extend the island to prevent that. Um, there were a lot of things that were done after the fact that weren't major. But as it was moved along, we were able to see what mistakes were made and what should have been done, and we were able to, to correct it before it lost a lot of money. But it's still a horror with two lanes trying to beat each other, and then all of a sudden it's a dead stop because someone's turning into the gas station. So the, the, the traffic pattern really needs to be looked at. And I'm assuming there's a lot of data to, to um, traffic lights as opposed to rotaries. Um, maybe if that could be available just to see what, what the differences are, if we could get a, um, some information on that, just to see what, um, how rotaries stack up. I mean, it seems to be a lot of rotaries going in a lot of different places around the state. I'm a real estate appraiser, so I'm driving around a lot in a lot of different communities. Seems like there's an awful lot of rotaries. Hopefully that's a, a plus. I mean, I think we see what's happened in Sterling, and it's certainly been beneficial in Sterling compared to what it was coming off the highway then. Um, so I, I'd be interested in seeing the data as to why you think a rotary there would be beneficial. Um, that's it for now, but I reserve my right to have a lot more questions in the future. Uh, thank you for your time. Good evening, ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am, before you leave, can you come back for a second? I could not understand your last name. Would you spell it for me, please? I'm sorry, my last name? Yes. Frida, F as in Frank, R E D as in David, A. Thank you. You're welcome. Just to 
respond a little bit to a couple of your points. Um, it, it is difficult to get the word out to everybody about these hearings. Um, not everybody reads the newspaper anymore. We've been working with the city to try to um, have the meeting notice published on uh, social media, and it's on our social media as well. But one of the things that we're, we'll be doing with this project and going forward is that you'll be able to see uh, a video of this hearing uh, off our website. Um, so people that are here tonight, you know, they can watch that and they'll still have the ability to ask questions. So, um, you know, anybody that's not here can spread the word, um, you know, to look at our website and, you know, in the next week or so we'll have that up there. Um, as far as the assisted living, um, we, we've talked to somebody here tonight um, about that. And um, we've got some pretty good ideas. On, uh, you have some signalized control of people walking across the street. So that's, that's something we're going to look at. Um, the roundabout signal, uh, we've studied that quite a bit in the last year and a half. And we have, we've actually we brought in another consultant that uh, specializes in this. And they've done reports. And um, you know, that's something we can you know, offline we can share some of that stuff with you. But there is a lot of data, a lot of traffic counts, and we studied it pretty well, so. Okay, is there anybody else that would uh, like to speak? Yes, sir, I'm trying to get you. Yes, sir. We did all this view today. We put up all these trees. We, yeah. trade. we figured if you were taking 18 minutes and a half million dollars, we have to do a little something. But my name is Dean Mazzarella, uh, Mayor of the City of London, Senate, and full disclosure, a board member for MassDOT. Um, and thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Uh, we Just so everybody understands this, we mailed out 159 letters to every property owner along the way. So um, last known address from the assessor's office, so that if there's somebody that didn't get something, um, we do a morning briefing, we advertise it there, we do a cable show, I mean, we've been talking about this now since the day that we had to postpone it, so that's why I think you see so many people here tonight, because we really wanted to make sure that um, people knew about it, as, as a way, as it affected them, and people that travel through the area, just concerned residents of the city, I and mean, this is First of all, it took a long time to get this project here. These projects just don't happen. There's a whole nother process to get a project on the transportation improvement plan, and then later on to get it funded. And so this project's 100% funded right away. Normally the city would have to do the right away issues. We'd have to come up with a payment for the right away. 100% of that's being paid for by this, this grant. So that probably saves the city about a million dollars by, by it easy from right away and everything else that's involved. Uh, not to mention the time it takes. But um, one of the main things that I heard about is certainly the, the round balls. And um, just so everybody knows, we spent about two years looking at this because we were opposed originally and asked that it be looked at and re looked at and we re looked at. Um, because in this area, we, we, we've all seen these round balls. And um, I think the initial ones that were put in weren't real great. And so I think we're a little shy on. on but as soon as anybody I talked about this project, the only area of concern was, as soon as I said the word roundabout, there was a, oh, no, you know, no, please don't. Anyway, uh, I don't think we can spend a little more time on that, roundabout, I can't vote. Um, but the big thing is, on a positive note here, um, right now there are areas where there, there's sidewalks which are just basically integrated into the roadway. So we have students and residents who will stand there and wait for the bus to be picked up. And there's nothing that defines the sidewalk versus the roadway. And now we'll have a granite curve in, we'll have real sidewalks. And as a for instance, you get down around the cow wash, it's about 500 feet long of just open driveway, over open pavement. If you're standing there waiting for a school bus in the morning on one of the edges, somebody stops, somebody behind them sees them stop and starts to go around them, and then suddenly there's are stupid standing there. And I've seen it happen. Really dangerous. That area, the most critical area here, not that at all is it, but right at that area where the gas station seemed to be, from there on up into Willard Street, both sides of the street, it's just housing developments there, retail, that's the area really of concern, major concern there in terms of, when you council talked about crosswalks and proper lighting, 
I'd really like to have you take a second look at that if you can. That's, there are a lot of elderly, just kids, and it's a busy section of that room 12. The other areas are kind of rural, but that area is really critical. And, um, you know, there's a variety store on one side, this side, so it's crisscross all day long. And, you, you know, you sell the car count, that's, that's pretty sizable. So, um, this is a huge project. This is a big win for us out here. That project's eight, almost 19 million, it's big. It's gonna give us proper sidewalks, proper curbing, it's gonna give us a new roadway, a new drainage, a new bridge. Instead of piecemealing it each time with a different grant, we're gonna be able to fix the whole thing at once and all be done together. So, um, yeah, I think that the roundabout, I don't know if you can explain a little better, but there's one of the Toyota dealership, and it's where all the trucks come from Keating and Powell, and they basically just drive over it. It's not, there's not enough room for them to turn. There are a couple in Fitchburg that are, uh, my, uh, are, are I, probably poor examples of it. Council Freed said there are a couple in Lunenburg, uh, Lancaster, uh, Sterling, that seem to work well right there at 190 and 212. But um, that's the one reaction I get. As soon as somebody hears the word roundabout, it's usually a sigh after that. So again, this is going to fix a lot of the problems at the fire station, at Willage Street, sidewalks, all of that. Um, it's going to just be a big plus for us. So, um, but I just want everybody to know, we spent a lot of time on this roundabout issue, back and forth. And they took a look and another look and another look. And, and the data just keeps coming back saying, this really makes sense to have a roundabout here. Um, so that's how we got here. Thank you. Thank you. You know, like the mayor said, we, we have spent a lot of time uh, on that intersection. And originally, uh, we had a signal in there. And um, on you know, further review with the department, they wanted to take a look at uh, the roundabout option. Uh, it was, it's been studied for about a year and a half. It slowed us down. Um, we had, you know, a couple of reports have been done on it. Uh, the whole idea, the summary of the reports is that, you know, it's supposed to be a safer intersection. It's supposed to slow the traffic down and channelize the traffic. It's supposed to be easier for uh, pedestrians to get or navigate through the intersection. Um, when you're crossing the street as a pedestrian, you only have to look one way um, and you get out to an area where there's a pedestrian refuge uh, and then you look the other way. It's supposed to be uh, uh, more safe for pedestrians. The level of service is also supposed to be uh, better or the same or better uh, because you won't have people waiting at a red light, uh, you know, off peak hours. You'll be able to circulate around the roundabout. Um, you know, we were talking to somebody earlier tonight. Um, sometimes the roundabouts, you know, you have people flying through there, and you know, you might have somebody jump on a curb. Um, it's important that the roundabout, uh, the center of the roundabout, is, is maintained so you have good sight distance through. Uh, a lot of times, in some municipalities will work with local gardening clubs, where they will maintain um, the middle of the roundabout with some. Know, low, uh, low shrubs or, or uh, you know some kind of green space, so it looks nice, and yet you can still see around it. You know that's something we can do here. Uh, so that's I don't know, if Tom, if you want to elaborate. Okay, just send it back. Yes. Hi, yes, I'll go to the district office. Um, I will, the, the mayor uh, mentioned the, the Fitchburg roundabout and the Lancaster roundabout. Those were our first and second roundabouts in the district. So um, they didn't come out great and we actually had to go back and run with them. But we learned a lot from that. Um, and, and they've been much the, much improved since then. You know, we've learned a lot just from putting those in. We had we videotaped them. Um, we watched all the, um, we watched what traffic was doing. So. Yeah, we can. We'll have to take. Um, we'll have to agree that we didn't do a good job on those. But the the ones that we're building now are much better. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, and I think that's something we've heard tonight about the mid block crossing and getting people safely across the, the road. So that's that's something we'll uh, 
you know, we'll try to look at a little closer and see pedestrian patterns for, you know, origin destination that people are walking to and see if we can help, help with that. Uh, are there any other elected officials that would like to talk tonight? Okay. Um, seeing that, I'd like to open it up to the public. Once again, if you could come up to the podium, state your name, spell your last name. I'd like to have everybody have a chance to talk before we cycle through and have people go up a second or third time, um, just so everybody can have, have, you know, speak. So, we're ready to start. Good evening, my name is Peter Bobenzi. Um, in this area, I'm going to read an old workbook. Can you just spell your last name, please? B is a boy, O V E N Z I. Peter. My first reaction is only a very positive. I'm very grateful. I think it's a phenomenal job. I like the roundabout. Um, let me begin with why I like the roundabout. I developed a, a large project on the 12th. Uh, called Brooks Pond and Pine Hill. And it's difficult to get out. One of the things I am a little worried about is that the illumination of the light, when the lights at Willow Street, which I, I partially funded, um, and the lights at Litchfield Street create traffic breaks. And those traffic breaks are taken advantage of by individuals trying to access the road from either direction. So I'm worried about that. You will keep the Willow Street one. And the other one is gone. What I like about it is and as you come out of the Brooks Pond, you can take a right and then go through the roundabout if the traffic is such that taking the left is difficult to cross the lane. That is a lot safer, and it's not that inconvenient if it's very close. So it gives that person um, coming out an alternative if the traffic is heavy. It doesn't force them to move, but I think that's pretty ingenious. I think that's good. Um, I worry a little bit about coming north and wanting to take a left into Brooks Pond. And I, would, I would like to you know, at least look at the turn lane that is a large number of cars. And those people are going to do that regardless of whether you have the turn lane. What I worry about is that it would back up the traffic if they can't cross into Brooks Pond Road. So if, if there was a turn lane, it would be to the advantage of the, on, of the flow of the traffic to allow it to continue to come. I would be happy to give any land in the front that you needed for that. Um, I do want to, so those two things I would like to mention. And the, another thing I want to mention is I want to, I'm worried about the, there is a crosswalk that's right there in front of Brooks Pond that being eliminated. It isn't safe. Um, you do have this problem where you have to sort of look at it from two lanes of traffic going pretty high speed to try to make it across. I personally have done it a few times and it's interesting. Um, so, but there is a, a, a crosswalk thing. The elimination of that would just cause people to lose the ability to at least by standing on the crosswalk to stop the traffic. I know that that's the loss of it. I just hope it doesn't get eliminated. If you could put a push button there, you have this huge um, retail establishment on one side of the road but residential on the other side and people do get encouraged to walk that's what we put all these walkways and sidewalks in I'd, I'd like to have you consider that and my last thing is that the road was built a long time ago and when it was built there were really no environmental considerations back in the early 1900s and so the all of the drainage you know, from that section uh, of uh, Route 12, which is funneled through a pipe into a culvert, and um, it, it, some of it doesn't have grates on it, and um, you can have uh, footballs go through. I mean, um, it, it's not just the public way, the whole uh, retail establishment on the other side, all of the real estate, it's built on the other side of the highway, roof drains, etc. It's an oddity that the, you know, that sometimes the DPW, when somebody wants to do something on the side of the road, have them call me and see if I would approve it, which is ridiculous. But um, because all of the drainage is 
is piped directly to us. Now, having said that, my big concern is the quality of the water because it feeds a, um, a pond that we use for uh, irrigation for, for crops. And so, to the extent that we will do, we have to participate to try to come up with some sort of remediation of all of this training we provide all the some of the engineering and whatnot, so that we can try and make the water when it reaches the irrigation pond have a little um, So from an from an environmental point of view, when we give up the size of the portion of the land to do that, it's important to us. Pedestrian access across the road and, and a turn, a left hand turn going north. And again, it benefits to the public, not to the developer, because those people are going to take that turn anyways. And instead of stopping all the people and backing them up. And again, uh, I give you credit for the work I find it to be a fascinating and good idea. And it allows people during heavy traffic, most of the time the traffic is not heavy, but during heavy traffic, it allows them to stay right around the rotary and get to the left without cutting off all the traffic. So good for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, just a follow-up. We are not taking out any existing crosswalks. Um, we're going to leave them in. We're going to obviously refresh the striping signage, and we're going to look at some kind of control uh, rapid flashing beacons in some of these areas to make it safer for people to cross. Um, as far as the water quality, we have any reconstruction project we have to. There's certain standards we have to meet for water quality. At the very least, we'll be having you know deep sump catch basins to try to catch sediment. Um, you know, so the, the the quality of the water uh, should be better after the project than it is now. Hi, I'm Gary Zimmerman. Um, I live off the Lichfield Street by the Eagles, and I also manage Chocolate Place condominiums. Um, and one concern I have, and I know you brought up drainage, but I talked to a gentleman earlier, he wasn't sure if it was on the map. We have a drain that continually, continually overflows between our property on the corner and the used auto dealer. I don't know if that's on the map, so I'd like to make sure that does get addressed because every major rainstorm, it fills up and it's a river that goes down the bridge that's not in shape. So hopefully that gets addressed and then improves the the drainage there. Um, as far as the bike lane, I'm trying to visualize the size. I don't know if there's a study done on the bikes, but I've been in Chapman Place 16 years and I've maybe see a couple bikes a week, if, if that. I don't know if it's just the standard to put the bike lanes, the bike lanes in, but as Peter mentioned earlier, these turn lanes, I don't know if you consider, again, I'm not against bikes. But this is a main, major road. Sometimes it takes me two to three minutes just to get out of Chapman Place, even taking a right turn um, over the last year or two. Um, is maybe take bike lanes out, have more turn lanes to go in. Because there's a lot of businesses in there, there's a lot of traffic, and to keep it flowing, the turn lanes might be better than bike lanes. Again, I'm not against bikes, um, but that might be a consideration to look at. Um, Another thing was talked about is these crosswalks and putting it in the fire station, keeping the ones that are there. Help, you're having sidewalks on both sides. And I always look at, well, people can walk down into a crosswalk. And again, I know from sunrise, people can't do that as much. But if you end up with five or 10 crosswalks, one along there, I think the traffic's going to get worse uh, along with the rotary. Um, Going to the lights, it was mentioned earlier, someone talked about having the lights in conjunction with the, the north entrance of Chapman Place. Um, I don't think the residents would be against that, because I know we're kind of diagonal to the fire stations, so when they come out, they're just a little off-center, because they're islands right at our entrance. So if that was to be looked at, again, feel free to contact Chapman Place, and we can look at putting that in there, I'm sure the residents would probably love that, because it's been few accidents there, trying to get out. It's not easy. Again, there's a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you.
My name is Joan O'Connor. I live at 19 and Middle Pond Drive. Lemon serves to fall over townhouses that is right across the El Caminos. I have three points I'd like to make. The first, I'd like to re in, in, uh, re emphasize Claire Frieda's concern about the lighting along there. Because I've seen too many cars come out of our entrance and make a left, and it's only if the people are on the right side, it's only a brake line lane. And if a car's coming this way and going too far, that car is almost swerving in and almost hitting pedestrians. So it either needs to be widened if you're going to do sidewalks on both sides. The second point I have is around drainage. Um, I'm not too sure where our water thing starts from, but it runs behind the fire station and we have a drainage pipe that goes under our property. Very bad storms, we have the same issue as Chapman. It's coming up and over like six feet and it goes down into the trailer park of Fallbrook. And my third concern is when you're starting this project is about safety. Fallbrook condo has a back entrance on Litchfield Street and a lot of people use it to cut through and come out by El Camino, not have to do about the lights. And it's private property and we get kids there and things like that. And I am afraid when you start doing that rotary, people are going to be cutting through. And we had to put speed bumps in there 25 years ago because people were just racing through our property. And that's the only way we could get them to show down. But that is a real safety concern for us and our residents at Fallbrook, is how are you going to handle it? Because you know they're going to come through our place. They're not going to wait to do one way. And that's my concern. Thank you. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, yes. can you spell your last name? Yeah, O apostrophe C O N N O R. Thank you. And uh, just to address the question about drainage and some of those comments, uh, there are drainage improvements as part of the project. We're upgrading pipes, replacing pipes that are deteriorated, and uh, doing an analysis of the pipes to make sure they're properly sized. Uh, so that way, you know, I think a lot of the water that you're seeing. Uh, during some of these high storms are because the pipes are either not coming down, there's a lot of sediment in them. Uh, so between that and also upgrading the pipes and upsizing them down to proper size, uh, we're looking for those improvements to help address a lot of the, uh, some of the flooding concerns that have been brought up uh, through some of the comments uh, as part of the project. Some of these uh, concerns are, are some that we have already heard um, in discussions with the town and stuff. So, uh, so we are looking at all those uh, improvements as well as part of the project. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Jim Chernak. You spell it S C H R N A C K. I live on Dogwood Road. And one of the things I noticed that you didn't have in your plan, I didn't notice that they didn't have a traffic light down at the bottom of Grant Street and Central. It's, it's, the traffic's unbearable there. I live on Dogwood, which comes off of Grant Street. And the traffic, they, they, people come down Grand Street, they go down Dogwood to go into Litchfield so they can get a traffic light at the bottom. And I almost got whacked there about three times on Central Street. So that, I, I never saw that in the plan. The other thing my concern is, is Rotary at Litchfield. Now there's two gas stations on either side. And I noticed that the Rotaries that we have in, um, down, down Sterling and so forth don't have a lot of businesses and traffic coming out of those gas stations. So my concern is that would be able to road to be able to handle all that traffic. I won't talk about that. That's, that's, that's my question. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, we've been working with the gas stations to try to make sure you know, we can get the tanking trucks in and out. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's something. How about the traffic light down at the Central Street? The traffic lights, um, in order to put a traffic light in, it has to be, we have to, it has to be warranted. There's certain um, triggers that will allow us to, to use state and federal funds to install a signal. Um, various triggers, I mean, accident rates, you know, um, volumes, there's, there's a few of them. We can, we can take a look and see if we can meet the warrants at that location to put a signal in, but we can't, we can't put a signal in with federal funds without at least certain triggers. I think the reason you don't have a high accident rate is because they come down Dogwood. The traffic comes down Dogwood, they don't go down Grand Street. Okay. To right on Central. We can look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm Steve Cody, COTV. I live in the Meadowbrook Park. I've been there for about 30 years, so I've seen that area that called Section Road quite a bit. I like to go to I think they work fine in the right place. I bet you all the rotaries that everybody has talked about. But this is the only spot where I've seen a rotary where there was so much going on before and after. All the way to town, all the way to the other light. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of businesses, there's a lot of homes, there's condos, there's everything. And it takes people a long time to get out because nobody will give you a minute before. Well, the only chance we have is when we get a traffic break on the lights. I think you could do a much nicer light system there. I don't know why there's no turn on red at some of those spots. I think it would work better for people who have trouble getting in and out of the gas stations if there's a steady flow. And I think all of us are going to be fighting like that. Don't put a rotary to save accidents in that spot and cause accidents along the rest of the road. The people are trying to come in and out of all the side streets and where they live in the businesses. And I think this is a long time coming. The road really needs to be fixed. We need the sidewalks. I think it's a great thing to do, but I wish you would consider and really look at that possibility how the traffic's going to flow. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Travis Condon. I'm C O N D O N. I'm a uh, lifelong Lancaster resident. Actually, grew up on this side of town, so I'm quite familiar. Grew up off of Blue Street, so I'm very familiar with this project, with this whole area. Almost got hit on my bike a few times there growing up. Uh, tonight, I'm actually here representing the Northside from Massachusetts Chamber of Commerce as a public affairs manager. Uh, we do appreciate the effort that was put into having tonight's presentation. and want to thank you for doing this. Um, the Chamber understands the need for infrastructure improvements and we know how much they can improve the economy in the area, how much they can improve the area when they're done right. Uh, we have a number of businesses who are members who are going to be directly and indirectly affected by this and just throughout this whole process we ask that you please work with them, uh, not against them, please listen to them. They deal with this traffic day in and day out. They have some great ideas and some great input. And as it moves forward, we also encourage you to please take all the steps that you can to mitigate the effects on their businesses and their operations. Uh, I know you posted some of the detours and things that might be happening. It looks like it's going to be a lengthy process. Please try and just mitigate the traffic as much as you can uh, so that we can keep going with their business operations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, once the project uh, goes into construction, MassDOT uh, is in charge of facilitating construction. So we'll have resident engineer and some engineers on site on a daily basis that will you know, be working with the abutters and uh, coordinate with the city and the contractors. So, um, you know, we don't, we don't, MassDOT's not going to go away in construction. We still have to have a presence up there, you know, to make sure everything's built according to plan. So, um, I'm sure that uh, our representatives out there, you know, will, will, they're out there on site, they'll be approachable and, and you know, we'll do the best we can to work with all the others. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> My name is Peter McDonald, as in Old McDonald had a farm, MAC. Uh, and I'm the executive director at Sunrise Assisted Living at the corner of Central Street and Beth Ave. Um, I'd like to thank you for being here and for everyone for having a good civil and civic discussion and uh, my city councilors for making sure that we're all here. Um, as, as Travis just said, I'm, I'm very concerned about the ongoing, <coughs> excuse me, ongoing operations of the businesses in the area. Um, during this, I had no idea there's over 15,000 car traffic count on, on this road, although in the 16 years of being at Sunrise, I've seen it expand quite a bit over the years. Um, and the idea of a one-lane bridge, when the one-lane road when you're doing the bridge um, gives me significant pause uh, for all of us, but primarily for my residents who, on a regular basis, we have an ambulance at our facility 
um, once a day, more than once a day. Uh, my concerns are also around uh, lighting, uh, the speed of traffic, and crosswalks, which I think um, my fellow citizens have been um, also articulating. The, um, I get the idea of the sidewalks and bicycle lanes and multi-user use of um, the street. I don't live in Lemonster, I live in Sterling, but I sit on the board of directors for uh, Aging Services of North, Ma North Central Massachusetts, formerly Massachusetts Home Health, which represents 21 communities in North Central Massachusetts. Um, and it's, it's the, the local access point for seniors. Uh, my representation is particularly around seniors. I don't see a lot of teenagers in this room. Um, we're all getting older, and we're not all going to be able to drive. We may, we may bicycle, we, we may walk, um, but that's not for everyone. It's still primarily a car-driven community in, on the south side of Lemonster, and I just want to uh, remind us all that it's different populations have different um, requirements and priorities. Um, again, thank you for being here and for keeping us all informed. We look forward to future discussions as the project moves along. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Dan Pothier. I own uh, EJ's Auto Repair, 11th Street. Show your last name, please. P O D H I E R. Um, my concern is the uh, the bike lane. I'm a cyclist, and I've done the Pan Mass three or four times. But to put a bike lane on Central Street is not a good idea. There's too many ins and outs. Somebody's going to get hurt, you know, and I, I just feel we should use that for something else. You know, sidewalks I can see, but bike lanes, I would never go down Central Street, even with a bike lane, because there's too many ins and outs. You've got people coming from all different directions. You're right going to have eyes around your head. You'd be safer to put a, a bike lane on Route 2, because it's that nobody enters there, you know, a couple spots. But Central Street, not a good idea. It's just, and that's 10 feet of pavement that we could use for something else. I think, you know, and I'm a cyclist, but I know where I shouldn't be. That's the place I don't want to be. So uh, that's my concern. And uh, the sidewalks, better lighting for sure. Uh, my place only has an in and out. I have two entrances, but I have one with people come in and one when they leave. I'm not super wide, but I got enough, I got to have enough for them to, one to exit and one to come in. I got two, two, two spots. I own 1150 and I own 1160 next door. So I just think, you know, instead of the uh, bike path, especially on Route 12, something else should be done with that. You know, they could turn off or an extra lane for somebody to turn off that would be safer. Maybe do something like that. But like I said, it's just, I, and I've been here since 86, and I'll bet you I've seen 25 bikes come down this road. So, especially now, it's busy. So. I don't know. That's, that's my input. My okay, thank you. Um, in order to capture the federal funding, uh, we have to accommodate bicycles on any of our projects now. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, the way we're doing it on this project is probably the, the least intrusive. Uh, you know, you can have uh, off road bike accommodations that require a lot of property takings and um, but the bottom line is we can't we can't build it's very difficult to capture get the funding if we don't accommodate all users pedestrians and cyclists so we think we're doing on well, this project we're doing it uh, you know without having too many impacts to a virus Hi, my name's Robin Newton, N-E-W-T-O-N. I'm at 44 Ward Drive, but I also happen to have an 
office at 1205 Central Street, which is right on the corner of Central and Rulet, where the lights are. That's part of this project. Um, is there, I know that's been redone. I mean, I remember when that was just a blinking yellow light, red light, <laughs> back in the day. And it has improved since. But could I hear a little bit more as to the exact improvements? It's on right at that corner. And my main concern is also just the LTL trucks that usually go in and around that intersection a lot to go towards Jitec. Why they don't just take the further exit off 190 up to Sterling to go to Jitec and probably take Willis Street is beyond me, but is what it is. And the other question I had is, you were mentioning about the bike lanes. I prefer passing lanes because just right now as things are with Brooks Pond and more tenants coming in, it's already becoming really busy. And with, with the rotary, maybe it might slow down traffic, but if I had to choose between the two, nothing against bikers either. But I think just flow of traffic, I think would be better than, than anything else. So, thank you. Yeah, as far as the improvements at Willow Street, uh, how that will be, the setup, setup and the lane configuration will be similar to what it is today. Um, we're not making any curb line changes or anything like that, anything major. Uh, the big improvements there are to a lot of pedestrian signals um, with, uh, you know, uh, ADA accessible push buttons uh, and new countdown clocks. All those sort of improvements for pedestrians because we are adding a sidewalk um, from Willard Street down to uh, down the town line in Sterling. Um, we are, you know, putting back all the same turn lanes and there will be new signal equipment along with uh, detectors in the roadway that detect when the car is there. Uh, so that way, like, the timing of the signals will be optimized to allow traffic to pour through uh, the intersection. Whereas right now, I don't believe there's any of that sort of equipment there today. Um, so those are the main things. But as far as the turn lanes that are there today and the, the, the geometrics of the, of the roadway, that will largely remain, remain way in today. Good evening. My name is Kathy Pelloquin Weller, P E L O Q U I N dash W E L L E R. Um, I live at 41 Karen Street in Lemonster, which is off of Grant Street. And in the morning, I need to come out of the bottom of Grant Street and take a left to go through town to go check on my dad. Trying to get out of Grant Street in the morning at 8 o'clock is impossible. It either forces me to go through um, Dogwood um, or to go around to Willow Street and catch the lights. I don't know how you're going to slow the speed down. There's nobody doing 40 coming down Central Street in the morning. They're doing 50 or more because they want to get to wherever they happen to go. I can sit there for five to seven minutes trying to take a left-hand turn. And there are people trying to inch around me into the used car parking lot to get through and around me so that I can't now see if I can take a left-hand turn because of the oncoming traffic coming in from Sterling. <coughs> I don't know how you're gonna do this. I, I really have a major concern that taking away a light, that's the only time I get to pull out is those two lights stop the traffic like previous people have said. If you don't have that, how do you stop the traffic? And how do you get people to drive 30 on that road that you've already given them 40? You need to figure that one out too. And we just we just need to have a better way of doing this. And and I'm concerned about all the businesses and trying to take left hand turns into businesses as well as everybody else. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean that, that's a concern. I understand, you know, hearing everybody tonight that you won't have that break in the traffic at a signal. Um, you know, if somebody's a red light, if you're trying to get out of a side street, take a left, you get a little break. And with a roundabout, um, it will slow the traffic down because you cannot go 50 miles an hour through that intersection. You won't be able to anymore. You're going to have to go slower. So. Yeah, at the roundabout. Right. That's at the gas station. Grand Street is at, at least a half, three quarters of a mile beyond that. They're going to be picking that speed right back up to try to get through that whole intersection. They, you're going to get them right back up to that 40, 40 plus mile an hour really quickly. The road debris will stop them there, but it won't stop them the rest of the way. Great. Well, you mentioned the roundabout, taking up the signal. That's why I mentioned that. I understand that, but it's not going to stop the traffic 
once it gets out of that rotary. It's not going to keep it at third. Anybody else have any questions or comments? So we can come a second round, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to speak a little bit on the comment. Oh, Gary Zimmerman. I may have shot the place. Yeah, you know, not against bikes. As we mentioned, um, for the federal assistance, you need to have bike lights. This is the problem I have with the government. That you look at all the businesses, all the ins and outs of this road, and you have bikes coming down, and now you have to watch out for bike lights and mind the traffic that's going on that a better study, again, possibly, as DJ Dotto talked about and Peter Penzi talked about, is having turn lanes, which could end up being more safer by using, utilizing this extra 10 feet to let traffic go in and out of these businesses all along this whole route. Because there is a ton of businesses, there's residential, Chapman Place, Walworth, Meadowbrook, Brooks Pond, everything coming in and out. And it's sad that you can't put an exception in the federal government and say, this study shows it's better. Because you're going to stop your bike lanes at the end of your construction. They don't continue anywhere else. So where they go? Nowhere. So it really doesn't make any sense unless they go all the way downtown or they go to another bike path on the other end. Because it really stops. And there could be no sidewalks, maybe. I don't know if it's at each end, but going downtown, there's sidewalks. There's no bike path. So it's sad that you can't go back for an exception to federal government to get federal funding. If the study shows that having these turnouts or turn ins is better for the traffic in this area because of all the businesses. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
you know, the, the, the philosophy is that you have a narrower lane, not as much wide open pavement, um, more defined lanes, um, you know, and, and even curves. It gives you a more confined look and it tends to slow traffic down. Um, you know, so that, that, that we're trying to apply as many traffic calming techniques uh, that we have in our book in that car to try to get the speeds down a little bit. Um, if you have a wider road, you know, with instead of 11 foot lanes, you know, you have no shoulders or wide, it, people tend to drive faster. So, you know, we're, we're trying to um, apply as many techniques as we can um, to, to slow the traffic. The only thing that's making it. So I can't hear you if you're not at the mic. I'm sorry. The only thing that will make that narrower is a bike lane. And once those lines have been washed away, you know, run over a hundred times and it's gone, we're going to be right where we are right now. Anybody else? Okay, if, uh, if there's no other questions, I'd like to remind you again that um, you know you, you can write in, uh, you can fill out the sheet and send in uh, any comments or questions you have uh, within 10 days of tonight and will be part of the public record. You can write in or email um, anytime you know, after the 10 days and um, you know, we'll get back to you. Uh, Again, the, the, the city has the latest plans, and they will have the latest plans as we go through the design. So, um, if you have questions, you know, you know, you're, you're more comfortable talking to the city uh, by all means, and then you know they can work through us to answer your questions or comments. Um, I'd like to thank the city for having us use this nice room tonight. Um, thanks, you, thank you for coming out. And I'd like to declare this hearing closed at 8.04. Thank you. Thank you.